Hey, welcome, my man, Theo. It is going to be another great year. We're going to have 28 awesome days of Black Batman Week, and we're kicking it off, right? With the Black Batman Week. I love it. I love his back. <laughs> we love Black Batman Week, all 28 days of it. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. But you know what? Black Batman Week wasn't introduced in James Gunn's DC Studio Slate, man. I, oh. I, was, I was disappointed. Very disappointed. <laughs> does he not respect Black Batman Week? I don't think he does. I don't think he does. Do you think, they're ever, do you think they're ever going to release, what was the name of his other movie? Black Woman? No, no. <laughs> I mean, don't Black think Bat so. Oh. <laughs> they got canceled. Think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, they're, so, calling it, they're calling it the Waller series, right? Yes, yes. So we'll get into all that, man. I'm, I'm so, I'm so hyped, man. So yeah, man. Did you, did you get a chance to watch James Gunn's announcement he did uh, not too long ago, about a week ago? You mean that was it the six minute one? Yes. Okay. I thought there was some. I thought there might have been something longer. The way everybody was talking, but they said announcement. That's all I saw. It was like six minutes. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. yeah. Well, before we get into the slate and all that kind of stuff, what he said, I mean, what do you think about it just overall, just the presentation, how you just put it out there? What are your thoughts? All right, here's where, how we're going to start this, man. I, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed, man. It's like suddenly out of nowhere, I'm going to sit down for six minutes in front, in front of a dingy background and be like, hey, y'all, we got some movies coming out. Be cool, all right? Double thumbs up. <laughs> I liked it. Be honest with you, I thought it was, he had to do something. He had to start communicating. And for the first time in a long while, I don't think we ever had someone from, besides Zack Snyder, but he kind of always did it behind the scenes, right? On Twitter mm. or something like that. But this is the first time we actually had a face that was out there talking about DC. And I thought it was refreshing. I mean, it kind of says, okay, we have a comparison to a Kevin Feige. That is a very good point. You have a face out there and like, hey, this is it. And you're when was the last time? Wow. I can't remember. I mean, like I said, Zack Snyder was the only one that was kind of out there, but he's really shilling for, you know, his brand and his image around right, Justice right. League and, and Batman v Superman. But uh, yeah, I just didn't, I never saw anyone just say, hey, this is the vision of where we're going with it. And, you know, whether the content is good or not, that's debatable and how it's presented, that's debatable. But at least, you know, he's starting to, you know, put it out there. I think a quote I've been kind of fond of telling my team in my business role is like, hey, you know, you see the storm coming, you can either go through it or go around it, but you can't let it come to you. And so I think he's putting himself out there and going into the storm okay. and just let it happen. Because, I mean, you know, he's just not sitting back and just, you know, dropping little nuggets here and there and letting things leak out there. He's like, yeah. let me just put it out there. You know, for what it's worth then, we, we, get, we did get a lot of bang for our buck and there's it's quite a bit to go over, actually. And it was only a six minute little talk. So, you know, maybe the man knows how to use his time well. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, he, we, he, he knows his way around Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah. Notwithstanding what got him canceled before, but uh, instead of a, instead of a micro blog, it's like a micro vlog now. He's just a little short jump in, get out. Good maybe point. he's a man good for point. the ages. Go ahead. Good, Go ahead, good James. Point. Good point. I mean, you know, he's, I think he feels like he's a fan himself, even though he's behind the scenes. So unlike Feige, right, he's actually a writer, director. So, you know, he is ingrained in the cr creative space. I mean, Feige is more of a producer, right? But I'm sure he's, Feige's coming up with ideas, but it's really, you know, James Gunn is really, you know, and I think that's, that's going to be some of the things I have concerns about him, right? Because he is such a creative, you know, is he, is he looking to kill his darlings, right? So that's going to be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, so... Now we can get into a little bit. I mean, what was he talking about behind the scenes, Mr. Benji? Let's start there. So, you know, now he put the slate out there. You know, he's got some quotes and we'll go into the official announcements. But uh, I know you put some things out here about, hey, man, you know, he's been he's been talking some 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 some, some crazy some craziness out there, man, around what was happening previously. So what have you seen that he hasn't put out there, maybe public facing, but behind the scenes around? OK, so. Slate? I figure anyone listening to this kind of knows a little bit about James Gunn or whatever. Just, you know, he did Guardians of the Galaxy, familiar with Marvel. He's actually a comic guy, sure. And DC, they've been run by, lack of a better term, pretty much business people, who, not even business people, people who aren't attached to DC for a while, right? They're just kind of letting it go and see the results of that. So 
now we get some this new guy in James Gunn who comes from Troma Films. If you don't know Troma Films, they were traumatic. So it's Troma, T-R-O-M-A, if you go look it up. But a Toxic Avenger and some other NC-17 and not safe for work type of weirdness was where he came from. I always got to bring that up because it kind of informs a little bit of who he is or who he used to be. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say who he is, but anyway, he was talking noise and he was quoted. And this is a very non-Hollywood thing to say, but he was quoted as saying the past leadership was effed up, you know, he dropped some explicit, ex, you know, expletives on him. Just, Hey man, past leadership is effed up. It's like, Oh really? That's how, that's how we're starting the day now. We're, we're presenting ourselves as a, as a new face of this company. You're just going to say the past leadership was effed up. What does that make you? I don't know. Does, this, does that quote surprise you at all? No. I mean, if you watch his films, I mean, there's a, a certain, you know, crassness about how he presents certain things and from the violence to the, you know, the language and F-bombs. I mean, if you watch Suicide Squad, right? I mean, they, that tells you everything you need to know about his sensibility right and so when it comes yeah. as an artist so i mean yeah, as an artist yourself i'm assuming you know a lot of your art comes out of your own personality right who you are so i don't i don't see that as being too surprising that he would say something like that yeah exactly and i you know what he might actually fit for the tone of this current era right where you just get on twitter you kind of say whatever you want say whatever you feel it worked for Trump, not comparing him to a politician, but people just getting up and saying, hey, this is what I feel. This is how it is, blah, blah, blah. I think Gunn may be that version of that for for Hollywood, for, for DC or Warner Brothers, at least. Yeah, I, I, yeah, could be. I mean, so yeah, definitely a controversial figure, but a very successful figure. I mean, he's he's worked in both the major Earl studios, MCEU, and created basically the whole Guardians of the Galaxy motif and really kind of out of that you know Thanos came out became you know the biggest movie one of the biggest movies of all time Infinity War and so our end game and so I think you know James Gunn you know feels wait, like wait, wait. hey are you saying are you saying he had a part in Thanos well I mean well he may not had a part but he introduced that corner of the world right with Guardians okay, of the Galaxy right. right you know the the color scape you know what it what it meant to be in okay, the universe before Anyone else? I mean, yes, you know, the Russo brothers, right, kind of, you know, spearheaded and got into Infinity and War and, and, and Endgame and created all that. But, I mean, he set the template of what that looks like, right, to kind yeah. of, you know, and how that may work. I don't know if he came up with Thanos and all that, but I do feel no, like no, no. Yeah. he came up with the whole motif of the vision of what that's going to look like and came out of Guardians. So, yeah, I, um, I think you made the space side of it make sense. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's huge. I mean, that was a big part of it. And, and, you know, even to this day, you look at the, the original Guardians movie, it's still, yeah, one of the better movies, I think, of DCEU. It was just, it was a lot of fun. You know, it was, it was kind of like, you know, the myth, misfits, right? Getting together. It was almost mm -hmm. it was his, you know, the Suicide Squad, right? <laughs> and yeah, then he, yeah. he transferred over to the DCU and, you know, even though, quote unquote, wasn't as successful, but the, the Suicide Squad, you know, has his fans. And then out of that, he created Peacemaker, right? Which is, you know, a TV show on HBO Max. So, so I think, you know, he's, he's well-versed in the, the language of nerddom and understanding what they like to see. And so for him to kind of say things behind the scenes, I, I think people are like, yeah, he speaks for the people. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he also in that, in that same discussion, just the Hollywood reporter quoting his comments titled, James Gunn Blast Past DC Leadership. Also within there, he said that, you know, Henry Cavill was dicked around. And that's true, I guess. Was he or was he just, or did he let himself get dicked around? <laughs> there you go. That's another <laughs> point of view. I mean, you know, he put, he, yes, he, he hitched his wagon to, you know, Tom Cruise. And so, you know, the whole thing with the mustache for Justice League or, you know, that was a whole yeah. mess right there. And so then, uh, but just fine, you know, he had to, you know, stand out and do his own thing. And then the whole thing with The Rock, Dwayne Johnson going in and, you know, doing that cameo for Black Adam, you know, mm -hmm. so that was The Rock's 
ploy to take over DC. Didn't work. <laughs> but, you know, Henry Cavill is like, I'm going, he just, he just met the wrong bet, man. You know, you gotta, you know, you gotta bet with the right people, man. <laughs> you know what? And that's, this, this, I'm glad you said the right people because, you know, James Gunn seems to be, I don't think he's like, he's not Hollywood. He was he's not Hollywood royalty. I was about to say elite, but I meant royalty where you have these, I don't know if people know how Hollywood runs, but you know, this how people have their families, their, you know, all these past relationships and you get people in Hollywood who are just so connected, they're darlings and like, oh, let's get this person in, let's cast them. You know what? We didn't have money for this project, but now that this person's on it, let's all do it together and do it. And it's kind of this big club and you have what they call, they actually call it Hollywood royalty. Mm -hmm. James, well, another, not, you know, the, you know, I didn't mean to interrupt you. There's another term I talked about before, Nepo that? babies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now people are realizing, well, all these Hollywood stars had kids and now they're stars. And so people are like, wait, mm -hmm. this is way more connected than we ever realized. But yes, that's yeah. correct. There is this, you know, a chummy buddy, buddy system in Hollywood. Chummy buddy, buddy, chum, chum, but, but yeah. And the reason I, the reason I bring that up is because you know, he's got to keep his friends close. So anybody who he's worked with on Guardians, people he worked with back in Troma or wherever else, these are people that he's going to kind of go to. And we see him doing that with like, oh yeah, Waller, whole Waller series. Let's go. Oh, you, you help me out with this? Let's go. And Hell, this his is... brother is always in all his movies. He yes, shows up exactly. somewhere in his movies. His brother, his own brother. A Nepo <laughs> baby. Yeah. <laughs> His uh, wife so he, is one of the main characters of Peacemaker. Wait, <laughs> is his wife? The, the, the I, actress that plays hard, hard Cut. Hard Cut. The blonde. Uh, no, that's his, that's wife. his wife. I did not make that connection. I did not know that. And, you know, so there you go. So, yeah, he's a outsider on the, on the top. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, good for him. So, I mean, well, anyway, we, we've been belabored this too long. Do we want to get into the film slate? You know, just give our high level thoughts on what was announced and, you know, anything high level that just stood out from you. Well, you want me to get into it? Or do you want to talk about them first? Oh, no. Do, do you think we'll just we'll just go ahead and plow through the plow through the slate right quick if you want? Yeah. And then so, we can talk about it and we'll go back. And yeah, as we go through it. So he announced this whole theme is called Gods and Monsters. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those things like. I mean, you know, you know what? Name generator. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I thought about that, and it didn't click until just now. He may have called it gods and monsters because he's talking about them and him. Oh. If that makes any sense, because mm -hmm. the whole trauma verse and where he's coming from, it was all about monsters and being different, being an outcast, and these grotesque characters. And now you're dealing with Hollywood royalty, DC's past. There's, there's, I think he's slick enough to where that actually meant something. Yeah. So, so anyway, we'll see what this all means. It's, but it, it is a reboot. Now, I mean, obviously, it's no longer DCEU. It's called DC Studios. He is officially a co CEO of DC Studios. So he is the head honcho who happens to be creative, which is very interesting. So, what the first two projects that stood out for me, he announced was like we talked about Waller, excuse me, Waller. The series as a continuous of a movie, I think it's going to be a movie. It's going to be using, man, Viola Davis's character, Amanda Waller, who is a big kind of fixer, if you will, in the DC comics. She's going to have a movie kind of explain her background and who she is. And, the, you know, because she's using the same actress from the Suicide Squad that he pretty much probably, you know, cast, as well as the whole Peacemaker crew mm -hmm. and the Suicide Squad crew. So I guess... Peacemaker ain't going nowhere. So now that their whole universe has been bolted on to this new reboot. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? I mean, you know, and, and so the reason why I bring this up is because I think Grace, we always give her a shout out from beyond the trailer. She made a good point that, you know, is he really going to be an executive or he's going to be more of a creative? In other words, you know, if it was, is, is this best for the, the new slate to kind of bolt on his old ideas and thoughts into this new slate. And I kind of agree with her. I think this is something that shows you that, you know, he is going to play favorites, especially if he created it. And so that that's going to be a concern if you're trying to bring in new creative people 
because they don't gel with his, you know, which is fair. But if it doesn't gel with his specific take on this character, they're out of here. Creatively, I, I think too bad. If you got a creative that's running things, I've seen this before. It's like, look, man, if they're not open to you doing whatever or coming in and doing your thing, just, just part. I mean, you know how they always use, well, why, why'd you leave the project? Oh, creative differences. You know, I think you actually would have creative differences, which means you get exited and the other person stays on just because they're friends with James Gunn. Is that the right way to go in terms of could you get the best product out of that? Not in the short term, but I think long term for developing a, a whole DCU, not DCEU anymore. That's another change they made. For creating a whole DC universe, it's like you got to go with, you, you just got to follow and get in step with everything. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see a creative lead this a studio or a slate like this because Kevin Feige is a producer. The, the, the knock against him is even though he tends to make great decisions and casting and just overall storytelling to build up to something spectacular, the knock against MCU now is that the, the sameness, right? This is like, yes, we bring in all these directors, these new actors, yeah. but you know you're going to have, the, you know, some, some funny, everybody sounds like Iron Man, some funny banter. And at the end, it's going to be a big CGI battle, right? And so it's kind of yeah. like ooh, that they, they they built out, what, two years ago, right? <laughs> so they got to make yeah. the story fit that, 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 that CGI. And so I think, you know, that that's the problem with him. But, you know, he that's a proven formula. Now you have a creative who has a vision, who has a, a, a template, right? You know, as you know, as an artist, right, there's just certain things you always go to. There's, certain, there's a certain crassness to his art. I mean, you know, can he lighten that up? I'm trying to think if there's any movie he's done. I mean, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy, but it was still kind of, there's, a, there's an underlying, I don't know what it is. It's, it's almost an underlying like crassness and like, you know, you know, flicking people off. And so yeah. that brings up the question, the next one that he's leading up is Superman Legacy movie. So his goal is to reboot yeah. Superman, who is the ultimate Boy Scout, right? You know, you know, yes, sir. Yeah. You know, I grew up in Kansas. You know, I always do the right thing, blah, blah, blah. So now he, can he write a, a, you know, a legitimate, true to character Superman story while keeping his creative vision alive. And, and, and that, that's a question for me. Well, he wrote a Brightburn story. Exactly. Yeah. And what was that about? Yeah. <laughs> a bad <laughs> Superman, <laughs> Superman that was evil. <laughs> it was a great concept. But... Yeah. What if you were to have a, yeah, a Superman that was evil. So this should be interesting because Superman legacy it's it's a take where you're trying to look at Superman and you know what? Let's go back to who and I'm I'm telling you this, I keep repeating it because these types of things inform where character grows from, where a product grows from, where a line of of uh branding grows from. You have a creative that sketches out all this stuff and they try to latch on to one or two core ideas or concepts. And I think with James Gunn, we're seeing this, you know, outsider slash alien who's really powerful, who wants to do something right. People look down on him in a lot of ways. And I think if he can tap into that for Superman legacy, you know, Superman being an alien and kind of being, you know, you know, he gets knocked for, you know, hey, he's not, he's not one of us. He's not human. I think he could really play that angle with Superman. So is Gunn the right person for this? For all of these shows that I'm looking at, there is an angle I can pull out of it. And I really want to see him executed. Well, I thought Zack Snyder did that with Superman. I mean, his whole angle was the alienness of, of being a Kryptonian. And just the weird look of the ship, you yeah. know. And then, so, so I would say no. this. I mean, you know, for all this knock against Zack Snyder, he at least had a, a vision, which he's yeah. afraid of. So his thing was Superman is an alien, right? Yeah. And so he lives in this crazy little box and stuff. Matter of fact, I don't even think he even gave time to Clark Kent. Right? His version right. well, of no, Superman. Okay, yeah, see, that's what I'm getting at. Like, you have this alien, but I mean, it, I mean, I didn't mean like a literal alien. I meant you're outside of your element. I think that's gotcha. the core that James Gunn is coming from. Where even though we saw Superman as this as this God, as this person apart from us, from everybody, 
you know, they got statues that are getting spray painted on and stuff like that. I think that James Gunn is going to get more into the the human aspect of it, like, you know, feeling like an outcast and you're different and weird. I think he can really play off that. Will he pull it off? I don't know. But that is my that is my hope when I think about James Gunn taking on the Superman mantle, because that is extremely important for, yeah. for DC. And Superman's such a hard character, man, too, man, because, you know, how do you make him relevant in, you know, a world where we have the boys, right? <laughs> just they have a mm -hmm. they have a Superman there that's just evil. Well, it's not so much evil, but he's just traumatized, right? You know, and yeah. and how would you react to that? If you have ultimate power, ultimate power, what they said, power corrupts absolutely, right? And so I yeah. think, you know, I think that's what we always want to think of when you think of Superman, but so I just don't know what he's going to draw out of Superman that's going to be unique. I mean, even Snyder, to all his credit, even I was thinking about Man of Steel. You remember Kevin Costner was his dad. There's yeah. a scene when, you know, he could have used his power to help his family out of that, that hurt, that tornado. Yeah. Now, yes, you should have done that. But, you know, the dad said, no, let us go because we don't want to reveal you to the world. And I thought, OK, that's point. That's that's the essence. Right. A Superman, you know, he. He has all this power. He could do so much, but he's always limiting himself. And so I think that is the challenge of like a Superman story. It's kind of like, you know, what obstacles to put in front of him? Because really the only obstacle is himself. <laughs> he really kind of limits yeah. himself and his mindset, right? So, so anyway, I think that I'm just curious of what he's going to, after seeing Suicide Squad and you know, Guardians of the Galaxy and some of his other stuff, you know, it's just... I just, I just don't see that innate goodness in some of his storytelling, you know? And so, I, and that's what you have to, that's what to, you have to draw out from a Superman story. So how do you, how do you think his innate goodness played with Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy? Did it? <laughs> I think, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, he's, he, he wants to be respected and, you know, he kind of comes off as a dickhead a little bit, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think all the different characters that that that, that had the innate goodness and in his stories. I mean, I don't see it, man. To be honest with you, yeah. I'm looking. I'm thinking Dax. I think he was the character that was the most, you know, honest and about himself and his feelings and stuff like that. And I like that. You know, maybe he maybe he might play Superman like that, right? Someone who's so aloof and out of it that he just says what's you know top of his mind, you know, and because yeah, he doesn't understand. Yeah, what you're describing actually sounded to me more like Mantis. Yeah. Well, Mantis, you know, she's, yeah, she does have some goodness about her. I mean, she's just like a new character they brought into the story. But I was thinking of Dax, you know, he's always kind of just like, you know, humor when it's not humor, you know, yeah, he just says what's on top of his mind. Yeah. Mantis is more, I thought she was more kind of empathetic, right? You know, with people. But, yeah. um, but anyway, we, we're getting to this. I mean, we're not the creatives, but uh, I'd just be curious to see where this goes. But am I intrigued? Sure. We'll see. I mean, you got to be. I mean, that's part of the reason I'm going to show up in the theater. It's like, all right. I'm going to eat my popcorn. I want to see what he's going to do to F this up. <laughs> I know, man. I mean, after, after Superman and Man of Steel killed Zod, I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> but you want to break okay. his nicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Waller was a big one. Superman Legacy is a big one. What else we got? Lanterns? What's this? Yeah, let's talk about some of the TV stuff. So, yeah, Lanterns. I mean, what? I think Hal Jordan, who's the original. Well, I think there was a one before him. Alan Scott, I think, but that was yeah. like old school Justice Society. Yeah. Yes, everyone. We we know our nerd stuff here. We're talking about the the newer version with the ring of power, the ring, ring of power, the ring. And uh, yeah, how Jordan is the one kind of we knew. But then they're bringing in Jon Stewart, who if you watch, what's it called? Man, I'm drawing a blank right now. What Justice was this League? series? Was it Justice League? I thought cartoon. it was called something else. Yeah, the cartoon series. Jon Stewart was the lantern that, you know, was foremost in all those kind of Justice League stories that that came out in the 90s and stuff. And so so they're going to pair them up in a TV show. I'm, that's fine. I mean, you know, high level, I'm intrigued, but it's like, you know, I think they've done it before, like a buddy cop kind of thing. I mean, the thing about Landers, they're basically space cops, right? And so yeah. they have a sector, they patrol, you know, you know, 10-4, you know, <laughs> let's stop this alien invasion. So I, it could be a funny buddy cop movie, sure. But, you know, I, I just... It'll be interesting to see where they take it. I'm actually more interested in that than, than most of this other stuff. Really? Interesting. What, what, what intrigues you about the Lanterns? I don't know. I also like the Lanterns. You know, their, their powers are heavily based on, you know, their, their willpower and how they see the world and their feelings and whatnot. So it's like, yeah, if I had 
the ability with just my mind to come up with all this stuff. How do I fight all these different, ba- I don't know, just, it's just kind of intriguing to me in a series about these space cops, you know, as you put it, I don't know. I, just, I mean, dude, they got so many lanterns you know, out there. It's, it's ridiculous. I, I, it, and, and that's, <laughs> that's, and that's part of it. I think we're, it gets away from the, the individual story from, you know, you either have somebody you, you know, for, for decades, like Batman, Superman, Flash or whatever. And then you have, okay, well, let's pick up some random obscure character like the weasel and put him in a show. Yeah. You know, so now we get lanterns. Like, okay, um, let me see what this is about. I'll sit down and watch. I mean, even in the current state of DC, you know, they got about five different lanterns walking around <laughs> in the, in the, in the earth area, which Blows my mind, right? Is that a problem? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they got Hal Jordan, which we grew up on, John okay. Stewart, but then Guy Gardner, right? He was the more kind of, you know, out there, violent lantern. Yeah. Cal Rayner, he was more the artist. I remember mm-hmm. when he came to the forefront, so he could, he's more creative. They, they brought in some more diversity, for lack of a better term. Simon Bass, he was kind of more Muslim, and they brought him into the forefront. And then Jessica Cruz, and then they have another one that's out in the far reaches, you know, helping out the lanterns. Her name is Sojourner Million. So, yeah. I mean, that's all from Earth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine lanterns from Earth. That's, how big is the universe? <laughs> Earth got it popping, boy. I guess. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. But it's going to be a TV show, so we're going to probably see all these lanterns pop up in some right. form or fashion. Yeah. Yeah, and I have I have no idea about this next one, The Authority. Have you heard of this? Nah, man, I, I heard of them, but I had no clue. I've never read a book book about them or anything like that. It sounds like, I mean, from what I've read and everything, it sounds like it's like DC's take. Well, they did uh, kind of like their version of like, you know, Suicide Squad or or, or more or less The Boys, right? The, the Authority are kind of like these superpower beings. They're just going to, you know, make the world in their image as opposed to just waiting around for something to happen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. I guess I don't. I didn't. I don't know. You, you hear a lot of people excited about this group. I don't even know the main no, they, characters for this. They group. came out in 1999 without a TV show, so comics were on the way out. And mm-hmm. I shouldn't say on the way out, but we were entering the era of TV series and movies as our comic source, and then they came out. So it's like, all right, no one knows about them. I don't know anyone who cares about them. I'm kind of mad. This isn't the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know why they didn't go there. Which what the Legion of Superheroes? Or is that the who, what 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 group is that? Is that the the Far Future group? Yeah, or is that a different group? Far Future. Yeah, yeah they they showed up. I think in one of those Just Justice League se- series gotcha. once in a while, but yeah, it was pushed yeah. to the side. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it seemed kind of like so. It was created in 1999 by Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. For those that don't know, Brian Hitch, you know, he, he does a lot of, he created the, the ultimates with, what's your boy? Millar. He wrote, he drew, drew a lot of that stuff. And yeah. then Warren Ellis, he's just, you know, OG comic books guy. I mean, he created yeah. what, what's the one that created, he created all these crazy ones back in the day. What's the one that's on TV now? I'm trying to think, man, it's showing a blank of me about the, oh man, the guy who can, he was looking for God and they do have a, they had a show about it not too long ago. Preacher? Um, Preacher, thank you. I was drawing a blank. Oh, okay. you know what? Did they do Preacher? I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm I'm messing up here. He did not do Preacher, but he did a lot of different <laughs> things. <laughs> scratch, scratch that from the record. He's not yeah, there. he did a lot of different things, and all his stuff is always a little off, you know, kilter, right? He does a lot of different things, and even he even had a run on pretty much everything that's ever been when it comes to superheroes. But anyway, so make a long story short, yeah, these authority guys are going to be in the forefront. So we'll see. You know why I had them twisted? I had them in my mind twisted for the wrong reason. I thought they were like properly under DC Comics, but they were under the Wildstorm imprint. That's what they are. That's what it is too. Yeah. Because they were under, what is it? Stormwatch. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so actually this could be a door that allows... Jim Lee to get back into the action because, mm. you know, Jim Lee was the, the guy who ran Wildstorm and was kicking out that cartoon, Wildcats, Stormwatch, as you mentioned, and the Gen 13, Wet oh, Works, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. hey, uh, was hey. it, wasn't, it, wasn't that your favorite comic book for a hot second? Man, 
Gen 13 was hot, boy. I, I don't know why, but I like I like I like Gen 13. I like Wildcats. No, nah, I'm looking at I looking at some fan art, and I know why you liked it. <laughs> what? Get off that '90s style, boy. That Get '90s style me. was wild. <laughs> Gen 13. Look, everybody, go look up Gen 13 comics, and yeah. you'll you'll be amazed at how goofy it was. But how say, yeah, yes, yeah. So anyway, too much about it, but you know we'll, we'll see where that goes. Paradise Lost. So that is basically, I guess, is going to be kind of an origin story of Wonder Woman. Her time there in Thermoscua. Is that how you sound, pronounce it? Thermoscua? I hope I say it right. <laughs> <laughs> so Paradise Island. And so, so it should be interesting, you know, see a young Wonder Woman bouncing around. Uh, no, it's not going to have her. Oh, she's not? Uh, that's, that's confirmed? Okay. I, I'm pretty sure that she's not going to be in. I thought it was just going to be like leading up to the building up of the lore and it's going to kind of, I don't know, maybe they run other seasons. I think it may run into her life, but I thought it was just about how that whole area became a thing. And if they get, what's her name, Nubia and all the others into it, you're probably not going to end up running into Diana's timeline. Okay. I mean, that's, that's unfortunate. Cause I mean, obviously Gal Gadot is as Wonder Woman. So, you know, Trinity, right. It's supposed to be Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman. It's unfortunate she's not even in Paradise Lost is going to be a TV show. So it's unfortunate Wonder Woman is nowhere mentioned here in these, in these, these movies, which, you know, is sad. So we'll see. Me, me I'm okay, excited about it. We'll see how it plays out, where that goes. This next one, this is the one that kind of got me. I'm, I'm intrigued on this one. The Brave and the Bold. Basically, this is, this is, this is what's blown my mind. You know, right now, Mr. Benjamin, we pretty much got about two different Batmans walking around DC films right now. Yeah, and it looks like they continue going forward. So we got Robert Patterson's The Batman, which we just saw last year. Mm -hmm. And we also have the Joker, Todd Phillips Joker, where there's a young Batman or uh, Bruce Wayne being introduced in that TV show or that yeah. movie, excuse me. So now we have a third Batman movie coming out, The Bob and the, the Baby in the Boat and Robin. But it's not the Robin you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a total James Gunn move. So, yes. So, they're going to introduce Damian Wayne for the first time in the cinematic world. So, for those that don't know, there's been four Robins out there, guys. The first one, Nightwing, and think, man, Dick Grayson, right? And so, yeah. he showed, that was, he was actually in a TV show, right? Dick Grayson was the, in the old school 1960s Batman. You know, that was the Robin there. And so, Dick Grayson has a, a luminous career. You know, he's got his own tragic, you know, origin story. And he actually, you know, evolved. He got graduated from just being a sidekick to actually being his own type of superhero, Nightwing. So that was the one, you know, that was the original one. Then there was the one that no one liked. <laughs> Jason Todd. The reason why this was because when we were growing up, Jason Todd was there. People didn't like him. And so there, there was a, an issue where the Joker had trapped Jason Todd as, the, as, a, as Robin and beat him so bad that he was unrecognizable and had to go to the hospital. And there was actually a, back in the day, a fan poll they sent out there. Do you want Jason Todd to live or die? And you know what the fans <laughs> voted on? They oh want that God. dude to die. <laughs> so that was crazy. You remember that time? Yeah. So, yeah, Robin was supposed to be like the light to Batman's dark and kind of keep him grounded. But then you had this kid who was kind of like, yeah, I'm a kid. I'm crazy. I'll fuck you up. Do you it's remember like, how Batman found him first? No, I don't actually. He was trying to steal Batman's hubcaps. That's right. Okay, yes. <laughs> yeah. Now I remember. Yes. So that all these origin stories, yeah. When you find out how they got introduced, now you know, yeah, why he is the way he is. I remember no, I remember that Batman was actually impressed from his technical knowledge that he could actually get as far into stealing the Batmobile or the hubcaps as he did. That now I remember. He was like Impressive kid. <laughs> no, I will take you as my ward. But yeah. Yeah. So what were you about to say about just just in general the darkness of Robin? No, no, that's all I was gonna say. It's like, you know, there's a dark Batman's kind of dark and Robin was kind of meant to lighten him up. And I think when you had these, you know, a dark brooding guy and then a kid who's dark and brooding in his own way, it was kind of like, eh, I'm not sure how this is playing out. I don't know if I like it. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of interesting. And then they introduced Tim Drake. Well, I, I always call him the Forgotten Robin, right? But that's the one I kind of remember the most because when I started reading a lot of 
Batman comics again in my later years, that was the one that was always around. And, and he came to the forefront because he was just extremely smart. He he was probably smart in Batman when it came to like computer stuff and things like that. So right, right. he was always behind the computer doing stuff. And so he became like Robin there for, 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 for a while. Now, you know, he had some other Robins here, you know, spoiler and some other folks, but you know, those are the main three. And then recently in the last, I would say what, 10 years or so, they introduced Damian Wayne. And for those that don't know, Batman has the villain Ra's al Ghul and Talia. And she was introduced in the, uh, what's it called? They, they were both introduced actually in the Good Christopher Darkness. Nolan. Yeah, the Christopher Nolan series, right? Ra's al Ghul showed up in the first one. Talia showed up in the last one with Bane. I was born in the darkness. Right. <laughs> don't, don't make me whip that ass. I don't like you. Anyway, you got to do the Bane voice every time you mention Bane. <laughs> It's so, so good. It is it's the best thing ever. Tom Hardy will probably put down his grave, you know. He was Bane. <laughs> he was born in the darkness. <laughs> so anyway. So yeah, so Raz al Ghul with his infinite wisdom say, Hey, you know, Batman is the best detective, smartest guy, he's just everything. I'm gonna make a clone. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> so he it raised him as my as as you know, as my own. So he created Damian Wayne off of, uh, I guess, you know, sales from Batman and raised them. And so Damian Wayne, you know, obviously Batman finds out he has a son and, you know, and this guy, he's basically, I, you know what I realize now and, and full disclosure, he is my favorite Robin. I'll be, I'll be oh. honest. I mean, any portrayal of him is perfect. I mean, every, I've seen a lot of different portrayals in like cartoons, you know, like comic books. Any writer, I think everyone loves writing for, for Damien because imagine the most dickhead person you ever know, but they have the goods to back it up. That's Damien. <laughs> he's like, yeah. he's like the best. He's like, a, he's like, a, he's trained to be an assassin. But so he's always trying to, you know, prevent himself from killing folks. But he knows he's better than everybody in the room, probably better than Batman, probably smarter than everybody. And he'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. And that's what makes him hilarious in any environment. Because I've read like a bunch of different comics. I, I saw some TV show, cartoon shows. And every time they, the writer writes them, it's perfect. Because, you know, just think of the most dickest thing you could say to someone. Like, why are you crying? Get up. You know, well, can we just kill him? Be done with this? I mean, he'll say <laughs> what, what, you should, what you shouldn't be saying as a hero. And so now they're going to introduce Damon Wayne to the cinematic world. And I don't know, man. I'm, I'm intrigued. I think Damon has a shot to, 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 to take, take the forefront here, man. I think that's a great character. That was introduced, and it was. I think it was who introduced that character. I'll look it up, but but yeah, I think it was Warren Ellis. But uh, I'll look it up. But yeah, so what are your thoughts there on this Damien being introduced in a new, totally new Batman? I have no thoughts on it. When I first saw this title, I actually thought it was relating to the Brave and the Bold cartoon, but it, it's not really, unless there's something I don't know about it. But I, I I don't have too many thoughts on it. It's just you know, it's 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 weird because. As you said, you know, we've got like another Batman going on. And it's like, how is this going to play out? What are you doing, Gunn? Are you just going to make yours more important than the other one? I don't know. And, you know, I'm going to add something to the end of this. And we'll get to it in a while. But it's worth talking about a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, real quick, Grant Morrison created him. That's another. So you got Warren Ellis, oh, okay. Grant Morrison, you know. And Grant Morrison, you know, he's been around forever. Yeah. Animal Man, Doom Patrol. I mean, he comes up with the craziest idea. He created Damon Wayne, and I think that's probably one of his creations. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. You know, you know, I think it's worth mentioning here. Like, we always bring up, like, where this stuff came from, who had a run on the story, and it worked, and all that. For whatever reason, whether it be the social zeitgeist, you know, is, is informing you of what's going to happen, or it's just, it's good stock material. Whenever you go back and say, oh, no, this is a good writer who set the tone for this character and he had a great run here and there. It doesn't matter what the actual character is when they have a good, good writers, artists and everybody in history. It just seems that out the other end, if you create something, it's probably going to be good for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. So, the DNA is baked in the DNA from the original creation of it, right? Yeah. The original creation of something is always the best. You know, yes, you can copy it and make some different changes to it, but that core thing, you know, you're yeah. like, wow. Yeah, we talked. 
we talked about this quite a bit on our Spider-Man episode way back when we were talking about, what do you call it? The No Way Home, how, how people were just crying in the theater over Spider-Man and all his incarnations. And it was like, you know what? Spider-Man just has good stock material. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. There's just certain characters, they built it right. So, yes, you can make all kinds of, put some hug caps on it. You can put a new paint job, you know, yeah. juice it up. But at the end of the day, it still, it still can get you from point A to point B. And you remember that. So, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. the more to come on that. Yeah, what else we got here? So, the Batman sequel, any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> it's kind of like anticlimactic. Yeah. Now they're going for another Batman. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, you remember that thing that made money? Like, yeah, we're going to make money again. Oh, okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah yeah hope they make it shorter this time so we'll see yes yeah yeah that yeah, was way too long all right booster gold this is interesting booster gold for those that don't know is a character from the future that basically is a loser he's like you know just a regular guy in the future but he finds a time machine and he takes all the tech from the future and brings it into the present and becomes this 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 superhero in, in our time and I mean, it's, 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 it's really done. They always do comedy around Booster Gold, right? And yeah, sure. It's kind of like one of those things where it's a TV show, so it should be funny. So yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, am I excited about it? I mean, it depends who they cast. Grace from Beyond the Trailer, once again, shout out to her. She mentioned that because James Gunn has relationships with Chris Pratt, looks like Chris Pratt may be in the running for this. So we'll see. But uh, any thoughts on Booster Gold? I actually like the the story and that character. So, I mean, I just think it's interesting in a comic world that you have a character like Booster Gold, you know, who's kind of brash and flashy and, you know, running in front of the cameras. Hey, everybody, it's Booster Gold here. Da! It's like, all right, man, whatever. Kind of a corny character, but I think the the story and the comic behind it could be could be really interesting. So I'm actually interested in that one. Yeah, you know what? I think you you hit on something there with this whole influencer world we live in. Everybody wants to be famous. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy. This is who everyone would be. You would be famous being a superhero, and that's what he wants. And Or it's like, what if a Spider-Man, his uncle didn't pass away, right? He would have been a booster go, right? Just, he was, remember the first thing he did yeah. was like, I got powers. That's what makes Spider-Man so good, man. This, this is a great character because he does exactly what anyone would do. You got powers. Let's go make some money. <laughs> and I don't, it was not my job to stop people and help people. No. And that's the, the fatal flaw that changes his whole life to become the best hero. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. And so I think, you know, you're right. We don't really have a lot. I'm trying to think of any TV shows or movies. It's not, as, you know, they come few and far between, but there's no just pure selfish type of, you know, superhero running around on, on a regular TV show. And so. You have different characters here and there that pop up, but Booster Gold should, could be an interesting change to that. Yeah, as as I said, I just always kind of thought he was an interesting, you know, contrapositive, if I can even use that word here, against all the rest of, exactly right, against all the rest of the characters. And it was, I guess the, the more dilemma every episode is, is he going to do the right thing or is he going to go for the money? <laughs> or is he going to go for that bag? <laughs> <laughs> go save go save and booster but man i got a million dollar gig hmm what should i do so anyway super so, so because i like to throw words around and use them but i'm not exactly sure the definition of a contrapositive a proposition or theorem formed by contradicting both the subject and predicate or both the hypothesis and conclusion of a given proposition or theorem and interchanging them yes i think that's what booster gold is doing <laughs> i love it i love it okay moving on supergirl woman of tomorrow sure you know i think they this is supposed to be based on a tom king writer series from the what's up would you okay no, 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 okay, okay now, I got, now i gotta go back because i, I don't okay basically contrapositive i gotta do this i'm sorry basically contrapositive if not b then not A is the contrapositive of if A, then B. Instead of A and B, let's put hero in there. If not famous, then not a hero is the contrapositive of if a hero, then famous. 
So Booster Gold is doing the backwards kind of version of that. Like, if I'm not a hero, that means I'm not famous. So I got to be a hero so I can be famous. So, <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, I mean, right? Yeah, oh, put man. that out there, man. Put that out there in the world, man. I love it. I love I it. I paid attention to math class. I'm going I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm I'm gonna clip this one too, boy. Logic, yeah, I, I love it. Logic, yeah, we're putting that logic <laughs> together, man, on these superhero stories. Ooh, what about ba- Spider Man? I wonder if you can put that into. Anyway, so it's, more it's, to come. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the weekend when we're recording this. My brain cells are already gone. All right, so moving on. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Tom King is the writer of this this comic book, limited series comic book, and now they're going to create a whole movie about this, basically, very alien s- Supergirl story. And, and and I guess in the story, I, I didn't read the story, but I just, you know, heard it, heard about it from just listening to YouTubes. They said that she's going to be, you know, she was raised on Krypton, but then she's floating around this kind of Krypton-inspired kind of planet and trying to help people on different planets and stuff like that. So it's supposed to be very out there and you know, good for them. And so middling, you know, I might go read the comic first and see if it's any good, but you know, it's supposed to be pretty good. And that's why they're making a movie about it. But I'm like, sure, <laughs> let's see what happens. Any thoughts um, on that one? Sad to say, I've never known a Supergirl story that I've liked. Ooh. I mean, just, yeah, it's, it's just, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, Waller, Wonder Woman. I'm like, okay, I like plenty of female characters, but Supergirl. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me let me not even put it in that context. I really didn't like Superman that much for, for <laughs> a long period of time, you know. So I don't know when they decided to add on Supergirl into the story because she was like sent with another capsule that ended up. She's older than him. She's older than Kalil, and she ends up on the planet later. So he has to teach her, even though she's older than him. And it's an interesting story. For somehow they never wrote it in a way that really. I don't know. I like some. I like some episodes of the CW show. So that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I would just say this once again. You know, shout out to Graham Morrison. If you don't like Superman, go check out All Star Superman. He wrote this uh, limited series. And it basically tells a timeless Superman story of Superman who, you know, what he does on his last couple of weeks on the planet because he's going to die. Powerful story, man. And, and, it, and it makes you realize that, you know, why Superman is necessary and what, what he's about. So, so yeah. So you can make a good Superman story now. It may have to end his death, right? Because the finality of it all. But, you know, you can, I think. And so going back to Supergirl, so they could probably take some great stories about it thing about Supergirl that always interested me was that she knew Krypton better than Superman because she was already a teenager, right? And he was a baby. So he knows, he knows nothing. He's more of an earthling than a Kryptonian, right? But she knows all the culture and all that. So, you know, I I don't think they played enough because she could really be the alien, even to Superman. Right. They never played enough on that, right? She should be speaking the language. She should be, she should be speaking the language. She should be like, you know, yeah, this is how you do art or, you know, or have an inferior complex, you know, because, you know, they're so intellectual. But they never did that. I mean, I don't know why. Maybe that's what was it, because they always played Supergirl as if Superman was the one who was like, hey, I I know everything about Krypton. And she's like, oh, okay." maybe that's what it was, where it didn't it wasn't genuine to me because, yeah, yeah, she should. And and Supergirl got along with more people, it seemed, you know, than Clark did. Yeah. So, uh, I yeah. Yeah, she would buy. I mean, you know, I mean, I have young kids. Yeah, by 11, 12, you know, that there is baked in, right? You know, yeah, the, with the understanding of culture and all that stuff. And so it's not like, you know, she wouldn't know about her culture and, you know, probably be upset. So I don't know, maybe Supergirl would Wow. The stories that could be told there. I don't know. I'm kind of mad that I haven't really experienced these stories coming from that angle. Theo, you should write a stern letter to the DC management, making sure that they don't F Supergirl up anymore. Well, maybe, I don't know. I haven't read this one. Maybe Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow does take that angle, right? So that's why she may be a little bit different. So if they do, that could be something positive. But, you know, and, and you know, we talk about these stories like, you know, these are like, you know, set in stone, but it's all about characters. We've been just talking about that, right? And if you understand the character well enough, you can make any character, you know, sing and be, be positive, a great story. So, you know, I, I I hope James Gunn takes that to heart as he brings it to the forefront. 
Okay, you know, r- r- real quick, I'm reading the synopsis here, and this, you know, Dorel has seen some epic adventures over the years, but finds her life without meaning or purpose. Here she is, a young woman who saw her planet destroyed and was sent to Earth to protect a baby cousin who ended up not needing her. That intro is strong enough right there, where she's, hey, I'm supposed to take care of this kid. Oh, he doesn't need me. And as you said, the plant, the the idea of her personality and everything was already baked in, and then her planet got it you know, exploded. So what was it all for? Continuing description. What was it all for? Wherever she goes, people only see her through the lens of Superman's fame. That sounds more interesting. Yeah. Okay. Now I got to check this out. There's <laughs> your shot to the number on your list. Yes. <laughs> all right. It says she wants revenge for some Okay. I'm, I'm into it. Then finally, that. last thing, the swamp thing. I think this kind of hits at that monsters that you know that in the god and monsters title so swamp thing is legit kind of creature you know or person that was turned to a creature by this new force called the green in the dc and uh, there was a tv show like we both mentioned great comic series so good and they canceled it but guess what it's gonna come back as a movie so it sounds like you're excited about because you thought the tv show was phenomenal so good dog that that TV show, and I don't mean good in like the Doom Patrol where it's just weird and only, you know, you got to be weird to get it and like it or got to be artsy or whatever. No, it was, it was solid. It was, it was like dank, but with a bright edge to it where, you know, and it's funny, I was listening to these people talk on this uh, podcast and they mentioned, you know, hey, DC released their new slate. And I was like, okay, they know what they're talking about. At the end of it, they said, and then there's Swamp Thing. We don't know what that is. Dude, I, I was like, oh, really? People still don't, they're not, they're not into it like this. But I thought it was an excellent story, excellently laid out. You've got this, basically a guy turning into a plant in the swamps, right? Yep. What happens to him? Did you ever watch any of the stories or do you know anything about them? No, unfortunately, I do not. I just know it was written by Alan Moore, who's another luminary in the mm-hmm. comic books world, right? And so... And they said it's a phenomenal story. So I've been meaning to get around. You know, horror comics has never been my thing. It's more kind of horror based, but yeah. Yeah. Well, so, and this is a high level thing. I'm not spoiling anything of the story, but basically, you know, people are doing bad stuff down in the swamps in, in Louisiana or wherever it was. Or was it? Yeah, it was Louisiana. Mm-hmm. They're doing some bad stuff out in the swamps because nobody can find them and catch them. And this one guy goes out there to try to help. And he ends up getting caught up in the mix and, you know, they try to pretty much get rid of him. And at some point he ends up, there's a lot of nature energy out in the swamp and he ends up infusing with the nature energy. I won't get into why, because that starts to get into the story, but he ends up becoming this swamp thing. And he is the horror, but he's the good guy at the same time. Mm. So it's a weird play on how they do it. Like, it's like watching Jaws, but you want Jaws to win, you know? (laughs) Interesting. Okay. Yeah, people always swear by that that series. And so, yeah, I might have to check it out. But something that's endured, you know, so long for being such a little, you know, it resonates with enough people, right? You want to go check it out. So, so yeah, so that's. That's the slate, Mr. Benja. I mean, you know, any other thoughts on the slate or do you want to talk about? Well, let me just tell you real quick and then we can get into, uh, you know, some of the current slate that's coming out. You know, we'll talk about that in a second. But from the business side of things, you know, so you say, hey, why change, right? Why is this, why are we doing this? Well, I did some number crunching. The D- DCEU, we just ended, uh, not this year. Domestically, you know, not talking global worldwide, even then it's still minuscule only made 2.1 billion of all this, the movies and stuff in domestically, right? Domestic box office. Okay. Compared to the MCU domestic box office, which is $11.1 billion. So almost 10 X the, the MCU was just making way more money, right? With their storytelling and everything. So, you know, there was something wrong there and, you know, it was more telling when, you know, Batman V Superman, their big guns came out and it, you know, did not set the world aflame. It didn't become a billion dollar grocer. That's, that was the thing that kind of made DCU say, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> and the things that were getting billion yeah. dollars, like Aquaman or the Joker, they were like, what is going on here? And so 
the plans that they put in place didn't seem like they were working. And so they had to change strategies to kind of think through that. So what makes this time any different? Let, let me ask that, you know, we'll get back to the schedule or whatever. What makes this any different? This go around. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I do feel like they do have a singular vision. Yes. It's, it's, it's the other guys. I always forget the other guy's name. Sarah, Seraphin. Is that how you say it? Saffron? Saffron Rice? Saffron. Yeah. Saffron Rice. <laughs> so that's, you know, a James Gunn, ex-manager, co, you know, CEO. I guess he handles the business side of things. But really, it's just James Gunn, right? He's out there. I feel like he does. He's a, he's a creative, so he has a vision and what these stories could sound like. But also, you know, he is well-versed in the nerd culture and he's on Twitter and can communicate. So he can kind of take the wrath of the fans and kind of repurpose it, I think, unlike anyone else. Even Scott, even Snyder, right? I don't think he had that much power like James Gunn has. And he knows how Marvel works, right? He was in the system. So he can kind of take th- learnings from that and figure yeah, out how I to make that's DC his work. Big, I think that's his big plug. Yeah. I think that was the thing. You're right. He worked directly under Feige in the early days. Right? Let's be honest. I mean, that was one of the early big swings. It was. I always think about that. Thor was like a big swing, and that turned out okay. And then this was another big swing for them. I mean, Iron Man and the Hulk, because Iron Man was basic action 90s movie, right? It wasn't that different about that. Captain America was a little risky, but it was kind of like a war movie. But really, I thought when they went out there to Guardians of the Galaxy, I said, they can do no wrong. Because <laughs> I didn't even yeah. know who the Guardians of the Galaxy were. And yeah. it was still good? Man. Yeah, and that's, that's a good point. And he was the guy pretty singularly to make that good. You know, I don't know if a lot of people know, but sometimes creatively, there's just this empty void where you have your obvious research and development kind of projects where, like, no one's sure about. And then you have your tried and true hits somewhere in the middle. It's like, you know what? Maybe we should try something with a bigger budget and do this and that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. But it's kind of risky. Who could we get to do on it? Okay. Let's get this guy because if he fails and falls in his face, we don't care too much because whatever, Mm. but if it does well and great, cool, we'll keep him around. He doesn't seem like that bad of a guy. And it's just like, Hey, is this guy going to do the thing? And I think James Gunn was that when they threw him at, at Guardians of the Galaxy, like, well, you know, if it does bad, it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody cares. And it's weird, whatever. If it blows up, eh, you know, we still got him around. We can try him out with new things and whatever. So that works out for James Gunn. Let's try some other things. And he just keeps on producing. So, you know, Hollywood royalty and all that other stuff be damned. I think people who read Discovery, Warner, Warner Discovery are like, hey, Let's let that guy take a swing. Mm-hmm, we'll, mm-hmm. We'll, we'll put a stamp of approval on it. Well, and you know, that so I'm looking at the slate of movies. So yes, they already in 2012 in Avengers, they introduced Thanos at the event at the end, right? That cut scene. But you know, I'm sure Guardians was on his way to, cause it, Guardians got released two years later in 2014, but mm-hmm. they had to kind of build up that, 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 you know, if he didn't do that right to build up the, the space version of that, then, you know, Thanos pathos that we saw in Infinity War, right, would not be the same, right? Because he had to go across all the universe to, to pick up all the different stones, right, for the Infinity Gauntlet. So James Gunn kind of created that. And they said, hey, James, let's make it happen. I'm sure they gave him some notes and all that kind of stuff. But it had to be something, you know, that's where you introduce Gamora, right, her and Nebula, right, in their fight to, to get Thanos approval. And so they dehumanized, humanized, humanized or whatever, <laughs> Thanos. To because now he has daughters, right? And what does that look like? And so I think that helped to tell a better story for Thanos. So anyway, yeah, so good for James Gunn. So that's kind of why this time could be different. Um, so looks like he's into it too. And he seemed excited. So so that's always a good thing, right? As a creative, you know, I'm passionate about it, right? But don't work, don't work, but I'm gonna do this thing. So he's <laughs> gonna put his mark on Superman and you know, I mean, I love creatives, man. I, I always think you guys hit for the fences, man. It's like, dude. This could fail spectacularly trying to create a Superman story, but he's taking it on. He's taking it on. So kudos to him. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. It's going to be interesting. I don't know how much of a connected universe he's trying to make or whether we're just going to get guest stars here and there. We'll see how that all works out because if we're talking MCU and the idea of putting together a slate 
you know, that's a, you're talking connected kind of stuff. If you're e even just bringing it up, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and putting your timeline images out there. Like we have this, we have this picture from a meeting room and it looks like one of the things that Marvel puts out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yo, are you going to be all hooked up together? Is your continuity going to be on point? How are you going to make this work? And we'll see. I think they can do it, but there's so much behind the scenes stuff going on. Like what happened to Static Shock? What happened to Zatanna? I mean, this stuff that's not even mentioned. The New Gods project that has started, not even mentioned. They've done an, an, a horribly, you know, just horribly, they've been horribly silent on Blue Beetle. They released one poster. And it's supposed to be coming out pretty soon, I think. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like I'm 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 excited for the future, but then as I said, I'm I'm disappointed in what I've seen in actuality, where you got the six minute thing behind a dingy curtain in front of a dingy curtain. <laughs> you've got you've got him talking bad about the previous management. And you know, people from the previous management probably still work there. So Absolutely. it's like it's like I don't know what you're doing, dog. Uh, so Mr. Gunn, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah, I feel you. It's going to be interesting. But you know, we forgot another one, Creature Commandos. That's like an animated film. I have no idea what this is about. So, yeah, sure. You, you, remember, <laughs> you remember I mentioned the weasel? Yes. From, He's in there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> James Gunn's brother. Yes, Sean yes. Gunn. So we'll be showing up. <laughs> so, yeah, so we talked about, you know, could he be successful? But they do have other movies coming out. And, you know, one is, I think, coming out next month or so. Shazam. Two, The Flag, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman 2. Man, so many things to go into on these ones. But, uh, you know, it's, it does seem like it's kind of like, you know, cleaning the slate, you know. But uh, from a business standpoint, maybe you can talk a little bit more about what's going on with The Flash and how they're changing the story a little bit. But uh, I'm just curious, what did these movies do well? <laughs> Dog. I mean, and what if what if Aquaman is, is still makes it a billion dollars, right? Or Shazam yeah. makes a billion dollars. Now... You know, guess I guess these these actors are gonna stick around that that role a little bit longer, right? I mean, that's ultimately what are you gonna do? You know, it's you know Jason Momoa or somebody could hold a press conference and you know put out something on Snapchat, be like, "Hey, I'm out here in front of the DC offices. Come by for a free signing." You know, and he's like, "I just made all this money, dog. And I'm in front of the DC offices. They said they're not gonna make Aquaman three. What do y'all think of that?" Boom. <laughs> Well, that sounds like they're pretty tight. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. the rumor is that, you know, what's his name? Jason Momoa, you know, went to go see James Gunn and, you know, everything's kind of you know, tight with them. And so, so I think he's okay with that. I mean, I mean, look, everybody that still got a job seems like they were tight with James Gunn. I mean, even Viola Davis, right? You know, she yeah. still got a gig, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So do you think there's truth to that? that little mini theory about the characters that showed up at the end of Peacemaker? I do. Yeah. Okay. I do. I mean, that was, he wrote, he wrote and directed pretty much every one of those episodes. He was yeah. passionate about, about that show. Like for whatever reason, it's kind of like, there's a new show on the Peacock called Poker Face. Mm -hmm. Ryan Johnson is actually, he directed and wrote a lot of those episodes. And you're like, these are big time movie guys. Right. And they're yeah. just like, spent all this time on a TV show. So it must be a passion project. And so, and also, it doesn't hurt that his wife is on it too. So, great a vehicle for her to work. <laughs> so, you know, I think you know it. Yeah, you know, Jason Momoa and you know Miller. You know, they decide to show up, and everyone else did not. Maybe it's got some validity. It's a relationship business. Show up, show out, be counted. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, Blue Beetle, as I said, is coming later in the year, and yeah, they, I mean, the movies are coming out this year. I'm, I'm kind of mad at, at them for not talking more about these movies so i'm not sure why they're keeping them quiet which movies are you talking about the ones that the, the old movies that they had talked about previously nah, like shazam 2 blue beetle yeah just like even if it's not i don't know give me give me something dog give me something yeah i mean but be honest a lot of these movies were supposed to be released last year so they've oh, just yeah. been kind of pushing them back and so and then we all we want to get into the flash drama of it all we've been there before but people say i mean if it's good We'll see what happens to Ezra Miller, but uh, what was that name? The, the, the girl, speaking of Naomi, the girl from the Naomi movie thing had some, not show had something to say about that, but she's like, yeah, it's kind of weird that he's still around and I don't know. There's some, 
we'll see what happens with the Flash. And the rumor is a lot of stuff that they cut to kind of, you know, bring in, you know, Michael Keaton's Batman or, you know, Gal Gadot's role as a Wonder Woman, Henry Cavill as Superman. Those all been cut. <laughs> so they just listen. I mean, it's kind of like they kind of need this to kind of just like, you know, allow them to reset the world. But again, you keep in Waller and, and, and the Peacemaker crew. So did it get reset? <laughs> yeah. So, you know. It's like, you know, reset means all new actors, new versions, everything. But, you know, okay. You know what? Okay, this could be interesting. I guess we can, I don't know what else we have to mention here, but this could be interesting if instead of doing a full reboot, because I almost think people are tired of these complete reboots, like, okay, now it's going to be better. Okay, it's the Snyderverse. Now it's going to be better. Okay, it's like, all right, man, shut up. Just, just make some good stuff that's decently, you know, contiguous, right? I think, you know, if the Flash movie does the right thing, and this whole Elseworlds concept gets, you know, it goes over, then you could just have weird stuff happening and, you know, story kind of tells itself in such a way that people are okay with these different versions, these different happenings. Like, I don't know if you ever remember reading comics and, you know, you'd, you'd be reading Wolverine and he's off in Japan somewhere trying to find some, you know, Yakuza yakuza kingpin or something and then you read this other comic and it's like hey wait a minute what's wolverine doing back in canada and they're supposed to happen at the same time and it kind of gives you some some you know goofy explanation it's like nah, nah. if you actually just take a little time and put it out there and explain it, it's like yeah sure they're the same characters but you know time jumps and flashpoints and whatever We'll make it well, to your point, yeah, when you read the comics, they have that little asterisk next to, like, the bubble. And then they'll say at the bottom, they say, where was Wolverine this time? Or read episode, you know, Wolverine, you know, <laughs> episode, yeah. uh, issue 22 to 25, find out where he was. So, uh, or even sometimes, they even do one better. And he says, you know, Wolverine says, okay, peace out, guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> Let's follow him. Go to issue <laughs> 22 and Wolverine. So, yeah, I think, but Elseworlds is very similar to the multiverse, right? I mean, we know that they have this whole thing in the MCU, the multiversal war. And, you know, we got a lot of freaky things happening there. And so I think Ant-Man comes out this month. And so they're going to introduce, you know, this uh, whole slate. Yeah. So Elseworlds is basically the same version of that, right? The what if version of for the DC. So, yeah, kudos to them. I think, you know, there's a plan to kind of make these weird things, off, one-off things in Elseworlds. One of the best Elseworlds, I, I wonder if they're going to make this one. Superman, if he, if he, what happens if he was a Russian? That would have been awesome. I would love to kind of see that. They did a, a comic book on it. Then they did a, a cartoon, or a, yeah, a cartoon on it. So I wonder if yeah. they're going to do a movie. I would love to see that. That would be interesting. Because, you know, he's all American, red, white, and blue. You know, what's, what's, what's this? It? What's the, the, the. The main title was Superman. I forgot it. I got to look at that. Remember, it was always at the beginning of a super, every Superman, old school Superman episode. They talked about justice in the American way, right? Truth, yeah. justice in the American way. And so what if he, you know, landed in Russia? That would be a great elsewhere for me. At least. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. I, I kind of like it. But, you know, you've always got to play to the audience. And if you're doing something that they don't understand or they're not down with, then it's just going to go stupid. So, so who's, who said this about The Flash? This is comedy. Probably one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. This is what someone said about The Flash. Probably one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. Is that, uh, is that Grace again? No. It's James Gunn. <laughs> He said that in that six minute presentation. Oh, right, right. He did say that. One of the yeah. greatest superhero movies ever made. I love it. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> and then the press, DC press managers over there on the side, like, yeah, you did it just right. You said it just right. Man, yeah. So when more to that, come on that. When is that movie slated? I don't know, man. I hope it's this year. They just need to get this thing out the out the door, man. It's getting mowed on it. It's been out. It's been sitting in, in storage for so long, man. Just get this thing out the door, man, so we can keep it moving. Yeah. Okay. So June. Okay. Yeah. It's supposed to be June. I think all, all these movies, all these movies August. come out. To, 
So all these movies are coming out this year, though. These last four movies, right? Even Aquaman 2 is coming out, what, Christmas time? Oh, man. Yeah, I think we are just... We're about to get a... Bu- See, this got DC, I don't believe you. DC's got all this crap coming out, and nobody knows anything except <laughs> except James Gunn sitting in front of a dingy curtain for six minutes. <laughs> well, you know, this Super Bowl's not, coming up. Super Bowl's not, coming up. So I, I'm assuming they're probably going to just drop a big old ad if I were them, they, they may do individual trailers, but if I were them, I would just like, DC is back. And they just show all these, the, you know, these movies coming out this year. And what's coming that's, next, you know, the lanterns, this, that's this, 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 you know, just like, push back, baby. Oh, hold on. <laughs> you, did the, uh, you did the commercial thing. With, doo, 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 doo. You remember, this, you know, that, you know, they fly at the screen at you. There's so oh. much content. You'll puke. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, where am I? Man, man they should them? do that, man. Man, hire me, hire me here at the real Theo Harvey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'll, I'll give you some advice, man. Oh, That'll be man. so hype. People be, be pissing their pants. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait because you got four coming out this year, four movies, and so and then that you know trying to get people hype about these new movies coming out. You gotta you know just say, hey, DC's back, baby. What yeah. Marvel gonna do? Marvel, Marvel got Ant Man. What else I got coming out this year? I don't know. What's I don't even know what's what's Marvel Slate? The Thunderbolts. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like let's see, twenty twenty three release dates. What they got coming out here? Talk about Marvel. Yeah, Marvel. I'm just trying to compare to what Marvel's got coming out this year. I mean, a lot of it is TV shows. Secret Evasion, Loki, Ironheart, Echo. So a lot of TV shows. I'm trying to think, Ant Man, The Wasp. So sorry, guys, I can't do my youtube my video youtube so fast but let's see phase five begins next month I'm trying to think the, 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 the tv show tv show okay the marbles so they got okay here's the movies coming out for for marvel mcu and man the wasp that's this month dang that's february 17th that's in like two weeks the next movie oh guardians of the galaxy but that's that's a wrap up so probably somebody's gonna die from that one the marvels and that's it so, man, DC's got a shot, man. And, and and put this up against what DC's got coming out, because I got the list right here. Harley Quinn Valentine's Day special, February 9th. Shazam, Fury of the Gods, March 17th. Titan Season 4, Part 2, in April. The Flash, wait, oh, last, last season of The Flash? Yep, early, supposed to be this year? Okay. The Flash movie, June 16th. Blue Beetle, August 18th. Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, December 25th. And sometime this year, we're supposed to be get some TV action for Gotham Knights, if that's still on the docket. And the last part of the the Doom Patrol, even though it's been killed, there's still more episodes that they have to release. Same thing with Harley Quinn Season 4. They've still got some episodes to release for this year. I think DC's got a shot, man. I mean, when you got four movies coming out, and Marvel only has three, and one of them is the end of a series. Well, DC's already in too, but you only got Ant Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Marvel's coming out this year. That's crazy. All right. So I'm going to give James Gunn, James Gunn, I'm talking directly to you right now. I'm going to give you a tip. Hey, I like what you did with the dingy curtain and you speaking six minutes in front of it. That was pretty powerful, short, micro vlogging action. It's actually worked good for you. Listen. Put Jason Momoa in front of a dingy curtain. It'll be great. Put, you know, whoever voiced Harley Quinn in front of a dingy curtain, you know, except maybe it's got some, you know, a, a club, a spade, and a heart and all that on the curtain. It'll be great. <laughs> keep it, keep keep the motif. Keep the motif. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Keep the dingy, <laughs> keep the dingy curtain. Run a YouTube video for six minutes. Your marketing team will have a budget out of this world that they can use to go to Cabo or whatever, but just make it. And the, use the dingy curtain. That's a freebie. They can I win this. It. I love <laughs> it. Yeah, man. I'm looking at this too, man. Yeah, you're right. Flash, Shazam, Flash movie, Bubbly, Bo- Bo- Aquaman. Yeah, they got more movies coming out. So, yeah. Yeah, man. So, I think, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Even though a lot of these movies, you know, could get rebooted or, or no longer be part of DCEU. But they got a shot, man. So, yeah. So, I agree. One last thing I just want to bring up. I mean... The TV slate for DCU I, I, or DC, I thought was really strong for a while. They even beating Marvel out, but now Marvel is starting to, you know, our MCU is starting to come back. 
But it's so sad. I mean, HBO Max, we talk about this in one of our pods. David Zasloff is cutting a lot of these shows. They're trying to save money. They got billions of dollars in debt. And so he's looking under seat cushions for any change, spare change to kind of pay off this debt. And a lot of these TV shows have just been canceled, gone. Some of your favorites, Mr. Benja. So we know CW, Airverse is pretty much gone. Titans, gone. Naomi was a small one, 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 at one season series, gone. Supergirl, gone. DMZ, based on a, a graphic novel, gone. Doom Patrol, one of your favorites, gone. Swamp Thing, one and done. And Pennyworth, which was about the butler of Batman, you know, origin story, gone. But yeah. man, the most depressing one. And oh, man. This is the week that we celebrate this too. Black Batman week. Batman <laughs> is no more. <laughs> so we, yes, all these shows and TV shows are gone and, you know, they're kind of rebuilding the whole, I mean, Peacemaker still around, right? They didn't say it, but I'm sure that's around, but everything else is gone. And how do we feel about this? Does, you know, does the DC studios have the right strategy when it comes to these type of TV shows. You know, you can't, you can never be sure when something is really going to work or not, but you can be really sure if something is just, just has a hard time in front of it. Right. So when people are doing something and it seems really crazy and far out there and you start to question it, that means that if you have these questions, that means the people developing have the question. The distributors have the questions. Like people who are going to make the commercials have the questions. I've been in creative situations where something is beautiful. It's golden. And then you get somebody on board and they're like, I don't understand this. Why is this even happening? I'm going home. And you're like, what? This is good. And they're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't sell right to me. And I went through this on the Rockstar Games table tennis. It's like, it was hard to get full buy-in from everybody. So with all this stuff gone, you still got people who worked on like the, you know, Bat Batgirl movie that got cut. Yeah, I, I mean, forgot about the Batgirl movie. Yeah. yeah, a complete Batgirl movie that was <laughs> done. It's like, how do you call up on somebody who's done a Batgirl movie and you're like, hey, you did good work in this Batgirl movie. Would you like to work on something else? And they're like, look, dog, maybe. Yeah. Unfortunate. So, like I said, I, at least they have a new sheriff in town. He's got a vision and they're going to recreate the slate. But I just hope that, and they, but they have a shot. We just mentioned it with a new vision, new leader, and, you know, a little bit of a head start on the MCU who's starting to see some slowdown, especially for this year. So I think, you know, we'll see. But then I think there's an overall trend too. Are we just getting tired of superhero stories? So that's another big test for this year to see. Have we re reached the end, but I don't see what's going to replace it. I, I mean, maybe horror, but you know, horror has always been around. It's so cheap. They don't really have a lot of, you know, genre horror. I mean, you got the Scream series still coming out. The Annabelle series looks like Megan is another horror trope. You know, the AI robot <laughs> that might come into forefront, but overall there, I don't, you know, like I said, this is really superhero stories are really kind of driving a lot of the box office now, you know, what? Uh, culture. That actually may be its saving grace. The fact you've got Gun in here to do something different, exciting, you know, come with the, a point of view that's not the same old Marvel trope. I mean, what, what's Burger, Burger King will never be McDonald's. So why try, you know? So maybe this is their, their way of creating something a little weird and different. You know, there's a strategy in business. Mm -hmm. where you kind of collaborate with your competitor so that people have the perceived option of choice. Yes. And so you to your point, Pepsi Coke, Pepsi Coke, yeah. Burger King, McDonald's, uh, to your point, this may be James Gunn came from both. This may be a point that like Feige ultimately is like, we need a competitor to make this interesting, to keep people interested in these stories more because if it's just one person it's a monopoly and people get bored with it but now we got oh we got dc i'm a dc person i'm a marvel person right and yeah. we talked about this all the time enragement equals engagement so now you got two sides yeah. that are gonna battle it out and you yeah. know i gotta watch all the marvel i watch the dc and now they're battling out talking about their, their you know against like you have republicans and democrats 
For those that don't know, if you watch that YouTube channel, you see me using the hand puppets, then you, that's going to drum up more interest, right? Because people who have no dog in the fight, they're going to be interested in what are you fighting about? And then you get in. So, so I think that's the ultimate ploy here to keep the superhero market going stronger and stronger because you have to have a legitimate competitor in order to create communities who are engaged and raged enough to engage and keep the conversation going. But if you just have one, that's why Marvel, people are saying Marvel is similar. Yeah. yeah. And wrestling kind of fell off when there was only one, you know, World Wrestling Federation. Well, World Wrestling Entertainment now, but at the time, yeah. Yeah, ECW. What now? No, there used, used to be WCW, WCW, and, 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 and uh, oh, uh, WWE, 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 or WWF. Yeah, WWE. and oh. they would, dude. They had put their shows together on the same night, and you'd have to switch back and forth, and they would reference each other. It was crazy how wild that was. But yeah, exactly. Well, you know what? And that's why we've seen a resurgence in wrestling now, because guess what just came out? So now you have all of the wrestling. That and then I think another one just came to a forum for National Wrestling Alliance to yeah. compete against WWE. And yeah. now you're seeing the ratings for WWE go up. Yeah. So you're right. I think there's this a validity to this. It's like a business strategy. I've I've seen this before. Sometimes you will have, you know, you know, perceived competition was really owned by the same person. And that's that's a brilliant business strategy because now you're creating communities who, you know, I like Coke, I like Pepsi. Remember they had their big Coke, Pepsi, test, test. Both of their market shares grew because the pie got bigger yeah. as opposed to their slice of the pie. They, who cares about their slice? It is what it is. But if the pie can get bigger, and that's yeah. what they're looking for these. So, so anyway, this, hey guys, come for the nerd talk about who wrote what comic book, stay for the business strategy. This is what we do. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't follow at the real Theo Harvey. Follow at Mr. Benja. <laughs> no, at the real Theo Harvey's give you the le- legit. <laughs> ah, boo, whatever, I love man. it. I love it. I love it. Yes. And and that's and that's why we call show versus business, because we want to create that engagement on all levels. So well, Mr. Benja, man, I think that was a good episode, man. What what what, what you got what you got slated for, for this week? Oh man, I got I gotta crank out this little this little ebook I'm doing. Banging. I'm 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 banging on it, man. I'm banging on it ebook that's all i'm thinking about good man get it out brother get it out yeah i'm gonna make uh, the <laughs> real talk i just found out those funnels you know what they're called now by the the next generation oh boomer funnels oh man <laughs> the new funnel is get on ig and have people dm you baby for your stuff man get all that boomer website crap dm is where dms is where it happens now so uh, yeah i i actually I actually heard a guy. I mean, I, never mind. I'll, we'll get into it later. Well, we'll wait for another episode to get into yeah, the funnels. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get into all, what that's all about. But yeah, yeah, good shout out, man. Last week I had a good week. Uh, we had my first annual company meeting in Atlanta. So we had a good time, set up strategy for this year. So now I can focus on just growing the business and the team knows what they need to do. So uh, excited about that, you know, doing the social media thing, getting out there, put more content. So yeah, go check us out. Like what you're doing. Hey man, appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. And so uh, maybe we'll do some c- collabos. Oh, no, oh yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> what I talk about or what you talk about, totally different topics. But hey man, there's a Venn diagram out there, guys, for what we talk about. So uh, that's why we do this podcast together. But uh, but yeah, that's about it, Mr. Benja. So hey, everyone, thank you for your time. Please like, subscribe, and comment at Show Versus Business on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Listen to us at Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Or if you want to check out old school website, go check us out at Show Versus Business. Take care, Mr. Benja. Peace.